Tarvikas, olemas. Yeah. Jorgen here from SPG Estonia, Boimla, Tartu. I want, today I want to give a different outlook on passing. Like most of you probably already know, there are like different phases to passing. Some people learn it, learn guard passing through the techniques, like I have a knee slide here, my leg weave here, all that. Uh, most of you probably know the theory that I have to go like by step by step. So I first try to control the legs, then I try, try, try to control the uh, knee line, then the hip, and then lock to the upper body. Most people probably have heard that. But today I'm going to show you what I recently discovered is that uh, it is possible to teach guard passing without actually teaching uh, most of the principles and without teaching most of the techniques at first. And it makes a whole lot of sense for beginners and at the same time for guys, guys higher, level, higher level. So uh, what I found is that uh, when I'm just doing the techniques, then lots of times something unexpected happens. Like I'm able to do a perfect rep of a technique, but at the same time when I go live or in sparring, it's far harder because unpredicted things happen. He starts to re-pummel the legs in and, and all that. So uh, I approach guard passing like we approach pummeling in, in Greco-Roman or, or freestyle wrestling. And the idea here is that I have to look at the guard, like when I go to offense on passing, then uh, what are the general movements that are possible are at all for me and what are the general movements that are possible for the guy on bottom, right? So he has his re-pummeling movements, like for example, when I go to sloppy, uh, uh, sloppy knee slide, he will pummel in that leg here. So the same goes for like, uh, when I start to move, uh, when I start to move, like uh, Toreando pass here, he will just recover guard here. Okay, so when I want to pass, what I have to do is that I have to control his hip and prevent those re-pummeling movements. Just like I have to re-pummel in Greco-Roman wrestling, only the idea is that here our positions are asymmetrical. So what I need to do, uh, what is possible for me, is that when I want to go around this way, then I have to control uh, either of the legs stronger. So this is the same as I would have an underhook in wrestling. So when I go usual toreando, when I go usual toreando, he wants to reinsert this knee. That's his re-pummeling movement, and I have to fixate this leg somehow. So so his uh, his hip would be uh, stuck. Like the same principle is seen from. Uh, uh, Terere is passing, if you look at the BJJ scout study, for example. So when I really compress the leg here, or I grab the pants, and I really compress the, here, the leg here, that nails his far hip down. And it's far harder to recover, uh, recover guard here, because he needs to be able to lift the hip to re-pummel. So I can do the Toreando movement, basically, I'm starting to move this way, and I pinch this leg down, and even drag, that prevents the shrimping, shrimping movement. And I can pass here and fight, uh, fight through with the other hand. So I can control the far leg this way, that I kind of pinch it, nail his far hip to the ground, and maybe pull it a little bit. And then I can do my around passes. So for example, Toreando. The other direction, the other leg, which I can control, there is no use of pinning it down this way, because then he can re-pummel with the far leg. So the idea is here, when I control the near side leg, I want to reinsert it into a leg drag position because now it's far harder to re pummel the, the far leg. So this is this is my leg drags that start to happen. And the idea here is that I combine the movements of those two legs, pinching this hip down here, controlling this hip by pushing diagonally through the other leg. And I can never do both at the same time, so I can't do like this, otherwise you will just uh, uh, re-establish spider guard for example uh, and these are the two pummeling movements I have so basically let me show you an example I start to go Toreando he will start to uh, still bring this knee in I control the far hip now okay and maybe pass now here or I can go like one two three with this movement starting by controlling this one he will re-pummel I grab this one here pull it down, now I'm controlling the far hip, moving around, and he will still start to bring this in, and I go to the leg drag, and pass. So this is the subtle pummeling here that is happening. Far hip, near side hip. Far hip, near side hip. And what I found is that uh, this goes for lots of passing positions. For example, if I insert myself 
here, like this pinching position. When I go knee slide, I control the far hip. I pull it down here. I go knee slide here. When he starts to recover some way or push up, I go leg wheel, other side, same direction, only I'm closer. So I started controlling far hip, near side hip, far hip, near side hip. Same thing happens on the hip line. Far hip, near side hip. And I combine those two. And the same thing is even seen on like over under, really low passing. Like when I go Bernardo Faria style, I control the far hip here, put my head in. Far hip, near side hip. So I constantly switch, like in Greco pummeling, I switch between the pushing far side hip control and across near side hip control. And this goes for all kinds of passing. And when we say that, like, when it, I can't teach beginners, like, okay, well, here is this leg control, here is this leg control, you just switch between those until you can pass the legs and land on side mount. Then they will basically start to invent their own proper passing. The final movement which I have is that far hip, near side hip, far hip, near side hip, I have the direction change. I pass over the legs to the other side. For example, I start to go toreando, far hip, near side hip, he comes in again, and I can go to the other side. Uh, here again, it's near side hip. To this side, when he starts to pummel in the leg here, for example, with spin, I can go far hip again and pass with Toranda. So I keep switching between these three key movements, pushing down the leg for controlling the far hip, pinching it to the mat, or pushing across the near side hip. I switch between those and then combine with the going to the other side, where the same pummeling movements still apply. And I do those two from being far, controlling the legs, just the same way from being in here. Basically, it's still the same even when I am almost past. Like, let's say I'm going under. This is still across near side hip. When it starts to like uh, go to turtle, I go near side hip uh, or, or like far hip pulling down. And now again, near side hip across. So as long as I remember those three key movements, three key pummeling movements for the passer, controlling the legs some way, or controlling the hip here, like controlling the sides of his body, near side nailing down, pulling down, or far side near, uh, nailing down, pulling down, near side pushing diagonally across. And then always mm, direction change to the other side. When I know these three movements, I can already drill all kinds of movements without knowing any passing technique or any fine points of passing technique. And this way, beginners can start to drill passing and good passing with direction changes at really early stage. And really advanced guys can start to think about their passing, not as a collection of techniques, but pummeling and then finding your opening and then you're basically passed. This has been SPG Estonia, Jorgen, and maybe I could uh, give you a different outlook on guard passing. Cheers!